Judge Oda presiding. Please proceed. Your Honor, the next three witnesses, Tracy Riley, Jackson Richardson, and Annie Campbell, do not wish to be uh, videotaped. Okay. All right, so we got about a half hour of character witnesses, and then we're going to break for lunch. Is that yes, right? Judge. Okay. All right, go get our jury, Mr. Mullins. The court will order that these uh, witnesses that are coming up not be videoed or photographed. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Was everybody able to follow my instructions and admonitions over our break? Mr. Rickers, next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Tracy Riley. You solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in these proceedings will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but truth, so I'll be good. I do swear. You may proceed. Mrs. Riley, can you please state your full name uh, and spell your last for the record? Yes, uh, Tracy Raylan Rylick, R E I L I C H. And how old are you? I'm 31. Um, do you have a family? I do. Uh, can you give us just briefly your educational background? Yes, I have an associate's degree in mental health technology. I have a bachelor's in psychology from Ohio Northern University, and I have a master's in science of education, specifically in school counseling from the University of Dayton. Okay, are you nervous? Yeah. Okay, understandable, it's still a little slow. Okay, sorry. Uh, what do you do currently? I'm a school counselor at Carlisle High School. And how long have you been at Carlisle? This is my fifth year. Okay. Um, what's your general role, uh, briefly, uh, as a counselor at Carlisle? So mostly um, we are, as counselors, we try to make sure that we help our students reach their educational goals, their career goals, and help them with emotional and social aspects of life and are generally their advocates on every aspect as much as we can be. Did you also uh, coach yes. as well? What I, did you coach? Mm -hmm. I coached softball for two years and then I, sw I was a swimming coach for two years as well. What, do you remember what years you were the swim coach? Yes, it was 2016 and then 2000, so the school years of 2015, 2016, and then the, the next year, 2016, 2017. All right. Um, when do you think you first uh, met Skylar? I started forming a relationship with Skylar her senior year, which was the beginning of the academic year of 2016. So around August of 16? Mm-hmm. Um, prior to her, uh, prior to her, your relationship with Skylar, were you aware of Skylar and anything about her? Yes, yes. What was that? Um, I knew that she had, she was a very popular girl. Uh, she, uh, some of the staff and I had just talked about how she was a really sweet girl and there was a lot of talk about some of her past relationships with uh, some students and her eating disorder. Okay. And was that a, a relationship issue dating back to eighth grade with the boy named Adam? It is. Um, when, I, I want to move to senior year when you had a relationship with Skylar. Um, that would have been fall of 2016, correct? Correct. And when, um, well, t tell us how often you saw Skylar in the fall of 2016. So she was one of my students. I am in charge of all students 9 through 12 with the last names M through Z. So not only was she my student, but she was our student aide for our counseling office. And then, so I saw her every day for at least a period as she was my aide. And then when we started swim, I saw her approximately an hour and a half every day for two and a half to three months. All right. Let's start with the aide. Mm -hmm. So she was an aide in your office uh, every school day of her entire senior year? Yes. And uh, what did she do as an aide? She would um, alphabetize uh, things when we asked her to. She would run passes and um, just help with office work, simple office work that didn't breach any confidentiality of other students. And so you saw her every school day mm -hmm. her senior year? Yes. Um, and you, you mentioned swimming. You got to know her more during swim season? Yes. We, on average, would spend an hour and a half together a day. And when we had swim meets, it was anywhere between four to eight hours on those evenings that we were together. Um, sorry. 
did, uh, how many swimmers were there? That year I had nine swimmers. So nine swimmers. Uh, how long did a swim meet take? The actual swim meet or the time I spent with the students? Because swim meets were only about three hours, but bus rides and time before and after was anywhere between four and eight hours, depending on the evening. Okay, so four to eight hours in total spent with your students? Correct. And it was you and nine students? Yes, that year I was the only coach, yes. And swim season went as late as February of 2017? Yes, yeah, somewhere either really late January, maybe early February. So definitely end of January for sure. And you were pregnant at the time? I was. Um, you, your due date was when? July 16th of 2017. Okay, so you were about two months behind Skyler. Correct. Um, what did the swimmers wear when they swam? They, uh, boys wore swim leotard shorts, and then the girls wore a typical one-piece swimsuit. Okay, and you saw Skylar in the pool as definitely as late as January, the end of January 2017? Yeah, yes. Um, did, did you personally, I mean, you were pregnant at the time, uh, did you personally think Skylar looked pregnant? Um, absolutely not, no. Especially retrospectively looking back as far as I was, I was pretty big and I would never have thought she was pregnant. You were recently nine months pregnant? Mm-hmm. Did, did Skylar look at any point full term, like nine month pregnant woman in April? No. Did you still see Skylar in April and yes. May? Yes, yes. Um, did you, being the school counselor, did you have the ability um, to form an understanding of the reputation Skylar had at Carlisle among faculty uh, and other teachers um, for uh, being interacting with her fellow students? Yes. Um, I'm sorry, are you asking what kind of reputation she had with the students or how we felt as a staff? Both. Okay, so with the student population, it was very well known that she is one of the kinder students. She never made anyone feel out of place. She would always step out of her comfort zone to make sure someone felt um, included. Uh, she was never bull she was never a bully. She was bullied. Um, and the staff, we always thought she was one of the hardest working students. Um, I really enjoyed being around Skylar. Um, she's really kind, really sweet, and very, very sensitive. So. How would you describe her character for confrontation? Uh, she will avoid all confrontation. As far as I knew her, she would, she would not interact with confrontation. She would find a different way, either walk away or find the nicest possible way to end the conflict. You also counsel uh, students who come to you in times of need? Yes, uh, yes. And uh, do you believe you're a good judge of character? I, I do, yeah. you, You're aware, um, you heard probably in July that Skylar had actually been pregnant her senior year, right? Yes. Um, and you're surprised when you heard it? I was, yes. Um, do you have the ability, do you think, to determine whether or not she could take the life of a baby? From what I know her as, yes, I, and I don't think she would, in my personal opinion. Thank you. No questions. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You can step down. Next witness? Jackson Richardson, Your Honor. given these proceedings to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. Good morning, Jackson. Good morning. Uh, can you, do you need him to spell his name? Um, what's your, how are you related to Skylar? Uh, she's my sister, and I could say she's my best friend. Okay. Um, is today your birthday? Yeah. How old are you? 18. Uh, where are you in school? I'm a senior. And where do you go to school? Carlisle. Okay. Um, 
you um, can you tell us maybe are you nervous? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Um, what jobs have you worked? Uh, I've always kind of just worked around just like small jobs. I've never had an official job at like a, like a Kroger or something like that. I've worked on a farm. Uh, my going into my senior year or junior year summer in Germantown, and I've helped mulch around. Some of my coaches they mulch, and I help them mulch. So your coaches, you play some sports. Yeah. What do you play? Uh, football. I played baseball my freshman and sophomore year, and uh, my junior year I run track and I plan on running track again. Okay. Um, we've heard a little bit your dad testified uh, about your family traditions. Can you just tell us a little bit about some when you were young, um, like Easter and Christmas? Well, obviously my favorite would be Christmas. Uh, okay. It would we now that we've gotten older we wake up a little bit later, but when we were eight or six, uh, it'd be about four in the morning. I'd still be asleep before I even knew how to set an alarm clock. My sister would come running in my room and uh, she would scream, it's Christmas, and we'd uh, get out of bed, we'd run down. My mom would already be sitting in the living room waiting for us to open our presents. My dad would still be in bed. We'd have to push on him and uh, tug on him to get out of bed so we could open presents. It felt like he took forever. And then we'd go and sit in front of the tree and we'd, take a, we'd open our presents while my mom took a picture. I would take pictures of all of it, and it was just then we'd eat after and listen to Christmas music. And uh, Easter, kind of similar, but not as big. The night before, we'd set out carrots on our por uh, front porch for the Easter Bunny, and uh, we did that for Santa too, but with Christmas cookies. And so then that morning, we'd wake up uh, about eight or so, and we'd come down, and my mom and dad would say the Easter Bunny came. So we'd check the front porch, and where we left the carrots would be two Easter uh, baskets. Mine would be a light blue, and my mom, my sister's would be a pink, and uh, it just contained like candy, gift cards, small toys. Were there were there other family members around? Uh, yeah. Never in, around Christmas. Oh uh, well, yeah, we'd do a uh, Christmas Eve the day before. We'd go to my aunt and uncle's house, and the whole family would be there. Uh, my grandparents, cousins, aunt and uncles. It'd be a big party, mostly for the little kids. The rest of us would just hang around, and then. Um, about two, three or four days before Christmas, we'd go to my grandma's house, which would uh, be my family, my grandma and grandpa, and then my aunt and uncle, my two other cousins, uh, Chase and Savannah, and we'd uh, open presents there early. Did you see Skylar interact with some of your younger cousins? Oh yeah, she loved them. Uh, she was always the type, she would, um, we'd have little cousins, uh, about four or six growing up, and she'd always want to be around them, especially one of ours with special needs. Uh, she'd always be around him, help him out. What's his first name, not last. Uh, Brecken. Okay. Uh, I want to talk. I want to transition for a second. Let's talk about Skyler. Um, difficulties with food over the years. Okay. Okay. When do you think you first noticed that she was having some difficulties with her eating? Um. It'd probably be her eighth grade year. She was really uh, struggling that time, and I just kind of noticed that her and my mom would fight about it just because she would be gaining weight, and then she'd she'd be unhappy with herself, so she'd want to lose weight. And she would just, like, uh, she'd just eat a lot of food, and then I don't know how to explain it. She just couldn't lose it, the weight. Did she hide things from your mom and dad about the food? Yeah, she would. I would have snacks for me just because my parents, I mean, I was fine eating and I controlled it, but I would notice my sister would take some and my parents would just assume me that was eat, eat, that ate it, but my sister would eat it too and she'd get bills sometimes, like the donut place, and uh, come back home with it and eat it before they got home and my parents just wouldn't know about it. Okay. Um, where is your room in relationship to Skylar's room? Uh, it's on the left, just down the hall. It's just a... Do they share a wall? Yeah. Um, and if I were to come up the stairs in your house on the second floor, can you, as you walk up the stairs, can you see into the rest of the house? Oh, sorry, what? Is, the, is your living room and kitchen, your mom and dad's bedroom door, is that all visible as you walk up the stairs of your home? Yeah. And when you get up the stairs, uh, is there a wall or is it an open hallway also back down in the living area? It's an open hallway. 
Okay. And if I were to walk up at the top of the stairs and straight ahead, I haven't moved, what room am I looking at? My room. I look to my right, I see a door. What room am I looking at? My sister's. Skylar? Yeah. I look to my left, what room am I looking at? The bathroom. Only bathroom upstairs? Yes. Um, when Skylar, I mean, as she has this uh, problems with the eating, uh, did she ever purge? Did she ever throw up? Uh, yeah, I, I, I heard her on a constant basis get sick every night or so. Sometimes I wouldn't. I, I, it wasn't uh, unusual for me to hear her get sick. And I just, I knew it was part of her eating disorder because I knew she had it. Um, I hated to hear it, but I never wanted to talk to her about it, make her feel bad about it. I just wanted her to be happy. So I would just either turn the TV up, listen to music, or be asleep by then, just block it out. Could you hear it from your bedroom when she was in the bathroom? Yeah. Um, you live with some, you have, your family has two dogs? Yeah. And uh, can you tell us if one dog is closer to Skylar than the other? Yeah, Norman definitely is. He's the younger dog. Um, I mean, her and him and her and just tight, like, he definitely loves her more than anyone else. I mean, he's a lover, but definitely likes Skylar more. And uh, he's a great dog. He loves to, you know, cuddle. And he's just really affectionate. But if he hears anything loud, he is a barker. He barks about anything. If he hears something he doesn't know, he'll bark at it, and he'll wake the whole house up. What did you guys have to do with Norman, like, when the police were in your house? Uh, well, ho first off, I hoped he, you know, the police wouldn't get mad that he's jumping all over him. But we'd grab him as fast as we can, and, uh, put them on the back porch where the police weren't at or just where they weren't at the time. Or we'd, if we knew prior to when they were coming, we'd uh, take them to my grandparents' house. Was Skylar was a senior in high school and you were a sophomore? I was a freshman. You were a freshman, she was a senior? Yeah. Um, did you guys continue to maintain a good relationship? Uh, yeah, we've always been, you know, friends, but it, we have never been as close as we were when we were younger. It was about our eighth grade year. We. I mean, we just weren't as close. That was partly just because of everything happening and her just being a teenager, but also just she just kind of grew distant because of things that happened. How's this toll been on your family? Uh, it's definitely been hard. Um, I just, seeing my, my mom cry a lot, that hurts. And I mean, I've only seen my dad cry twice and that, <laughs> that, broke, that broke me. I hate seeing that and just, my mom is just constantly paranoid that someone's watching, and I just hate to see her like that. I mean, people saying things about my sister, I just, I just wish we could have a normal life now. But it's been on two years now, and it just seems like it's never going to end. Uh, what's your sister uh, like to other human beings and children? She's just the kindest person. She, uh, she's always nice. I mean, she just loves to make people happy. Like a people pleaser, she wants to make them happy, especially younger kids. She loves playing with them. Uh, she's just a super affectionate and kind, caring person. Thank you, Jackson. I have no further questions, Your Honor. No questions, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. You can step down. Next witness? <coughs> Annie Campbell, Your Honor. And this is also a witness who is uh, elected not to be photographed or videotaped. C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L. -L. And um, where did you graduate from high school? Carlisle. What year? 2017. Uh, same year as Skylar? Yes. Um, where, what do you do now? I'm a junior. I go to Georgetown College in Kentucky. Um, and I'm an education major there. And I play softball for the college. Okay. Um, when do you think you first met Skylar? Probably kindergarten. We've been in the same grade since... We started school. You've been in Carlisle schools your whole life? Yes, sir. 
and um, when did you two become friends? We always knew each other and cheered together, Pee Wee Cheer. Um, so we were always kind of just little friends when we were younger, and then we started actually becoming real friends, close friends in middle school, probably around sixth grade. Okay, and Pee Wee Cheer, when was that? That was from first grade all the way up until middle school. Okay. In middle school, um, can you tell, when did you first realize Skylar might have an eating uh, disorder? I want to say it was around sixth or seventh grade um, when we were very close is when I could kind of see, um, you know, her not eating certain things because they had too much fat but then sometimes she would eat a lot of one thing um, and not want anyone to know about it um, kind of thing. But that was around sixth or seventh grade, I think. Okay. In what extracurricular activities were you doing in, in that time frame? In that time frame, we cheered together for basketball and football. Um, so we were together almost all the time. And I played softball during that time, but I think that was around the time that she stopped playing softball and got more serious about cheer. Um, but we were together most days for were cheer. You, you aware of any problem that she had with a uh, a boy in a relationship in junior high? Yes. And did did you personally witness his bullying of her following that relationship? Um, physically, no. Um, personally, stories that she has told me from the relationship prior to it happening comments that he made to her? Yes. Um, how did she respond? Okay, I'm going to object to the line of questioning. I'm going to sustain the objection. Let's move on, Mr. Rickles. Is Skylar a confrontational person? No, absolutely not. Um, have you ever seen uh, girls uh, or someone be mean to her? Yes. Um, how, did, how did she respond to a person if they were trying to be confrontational with her? Um, she was not one to fight back. I've never seen her argue back um, or even stand up for herself for that matter. Um, I've seen her go to the bathroom and cry um, and get away from the situation, but I've not seen her fight back or argue or anything like that. I've just seen her get hurt. Um, in high school, did you two play sports at the same time together? Not in high school, no. Um, but your friendship remained close? Yes. Um, did you two spend time together outside of school as well? Mm-hmm. Um, in your 15 years of knowing, it's about, been about 15 years of knowing Skylar? Yeah. Uh, did you see her interact with other children? Yes. Um, she had a neighbor that she was close with. He was a little boy, um, and he would always come over and if we were outside, playing outside, he would come over, and she adored him, loved him. We would always play with him and jump on the trampoline with him and stuff. Um, and then she also was a cheer coach for, um, I believe it's called the Rainbows. It was a special needs cheer team that she would volunteer for and help coach them. Um, they were younger girls. Um, and then also <coughs> in middle school, there was this program where she was selected to kind of be picked out of class once a week maybe um, and she would go and sit with the special needs kids and play with them, make instruments with them. I'm not entirely sure what the program entailed but I remember her being selected by teachers thinking she would be a great candidate for this. Um, and so she was always interacting with kids and special needs kids as well. Did you personally observe her weight going up and down? I did notice it. Um, as a friend, I was worried about her always. Um, and I could always see her going from skin and bone to having put on some weight, back to skin and bone, back to putting on some weight. Um, and that was all through from the time we were in middle school. Do you have any, uh, any opinion regarding her um, nonviolent nature? I, she wouldn't hurt a fly, ever. Um, I've never known her to be someone that ever wants to upset anyone, hurt anyone. Um, like you said, with confrontation, she would do anything she could to avoid confrontation and avoid hurting feelings, and she just 
loves to love on people and she nonviolent completely. Thank you, Annie. I have no further questions. No questions, Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. You can sit down. Yep. <coughs> next witness? Your Honor, if we could break for lunch, I believe the next witness will be a pathologist. Be, I'm sorry? A forensic pathologist. So we're ready to start back up at 1? If that's okay with the court, yes, Judge. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll break for lunch. Uh, remember what I have previously told you. Do not begin discussing the case amongst yourselves or thinking about how the case should be decided. Do not read any media reports, watch anything on TV, uh, Facebook, uh, or allow anyone to discuss the case uh, in your presence or do any research about this on your own. Mr. Mullins, you can take the jury out. be seated. We're on the record outside the presence of the jury. Anything from the state? <coughs> Anything from the defense? All right, I have for you the proposed uh, redactions of the expert uh, reports. So you take those with you. We'll talk about them when we uh, break for tonight. All right, we'll see everybody back here uh, ready to go at one o'clock. You can remain seated. <coughs> 